Welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. You know, today we're going to talk about X-Force, number one, the latest title in this new Dawn of X thing, right? It's the relaunch of the all-new era of the X-Men and the X-Men universe. So let's dive right in today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back to the show today. What are we going to talk about here? X-Force number one. Uh, written by Benjamin Percy. Art by Joshua Casera and colors by Dean White. Okay, uh, we're looking at uh, one of the many covers that are available. Uh, this is, uh, what, Dustin Weaver, the standard cover. Uh, doing his best Jim Lee, I think. But it looks pretty good. Um, so X-Force, what is this about? Well, this is a kind of my problem. X Force has been pitched already as like sort of the the security force of the X Men, right? If uh, all the different teams have different uh, uh, areas of expertise, right? X Force is like internal security for the nation of Krakoa, and I'll introduce the team in a second. But you know what? Why even bother when we can dive right in to the million dollar comics game? <laughs> So, welcome back to the Million Dollar Comics Cam. Today, X Force number one. Um, first thing I'm going to point out is here on the cover, we got some characters that don't, or a character at least, that does not appear in this book, um, and others that uh, uh, appear to uh, varying degrees. Anyway, where to begin? First, we start off uh, with uh, a little action with somebody. We don't know. A group of people. They're obviously not mutants because they're doing sort of a blood purity test for mutants. Turns out uh, one of them is undercover and must be a mutant. It's our old pal Domino. Uh, we don't know what's going on here, but she sure looks like she's in trouble. Cut two. New intelligence. This is the team. Uh, mutants around the world are flocking to the island nation of Krakoa for safety, security, and to be part of the first mutant society. And uh, here's our X-Force lineup. Right, these are the uh, the characters I guess that we care about, but it's it's on the island of Krakoa, so we've got literally thousands or hundreds at least of mutants to deal with, and potentially millions coming online. So we've got our old pal Hank McCoy, the Beast, Wolverine, uh, Black Tom Cassidy, an old time villain. Uh, Kitty Pride uh, is involved. Obviously, she's in the Marauders, but she's involved in this issue. We've got Jean Grey. We've got Sage. We've got, of course, Professor X, Healer who I'm not familiar with, but I'm going to take a wild guess on what this guy can do. Most originally named X-Man, maybe. Uh, and then, of course, Domino, who I mentioned already. Diving in, we get another double-page title spread. You guys think I like these? I'm not sure, but let's give some credit to Tom Mueller, or Muller, the designer, right? These books have been design-heavy. They've had a lot of these text pieces. Uh, of varying levels of quality and usefulness, but there is no doubt that they add a little bit of heft to the reading, take a little, add a little bit more time to the reading experience, and and um, make each issue feel a little bit more satisfying. Although I have some issues with the um, density, if you will, of this issue. Okay, next we cut to Krakoa. Uh, oh, this is this issue's title is Hunting Ground, which we'll see has a couple of meanings. Um, uh, including right away, we cut to Krakoa and Beast is getting attacked by what? A beast, a crazy beast. And he we didn't see coming, but Wolverine has been tracking for days and this thing's killing things. And, uh, you know, a beast is like, well, we can't come from the island, right? Because nothing on the island would try to hurt a mutant. We're all friends here. And Wolverine is like, you know, it's not always that easy. Uh, this is nature. It's an ecosystem. So, like, where there's an ecosystem, there's prey and there's predators, right? And, uh... And this island, one thing that it does is it makes everybody feel really safe. And to Wolverine, safe equals soft. I like that. Uh, next, we get a little overview of some of the security features of Krakoa. Basically, there's particles in the sky and in the water. So people approach you from the water, you'll get phosphorescent uh, algae going on. And people, if anybody enters from above, the sky will light up in the place where they're penetrating Krakoa's atmosphere kind of neat it's a biological defense system and speaking of which the steward or the the ward 
of Krakoa is one Black Tom Cassidy. Um, you know, he's got all these plant-related power, right? He can control plants. He can make clones of people and himself out of plants. And just a lot of crazy plant power. So he's kind of a natural, like, uh, no pun intended, uh, interface with Krakoa, right? And what's revealed here is he can sort of control the uh the the wildlife of the island as a additional like defense features right and uh for air and marine vessels all private commercial and military channels have been di diverted 200 miles by international mandate so nobody's coming to krakoa supposedly uh, except kitty pride and the marauders who's returning home right she's been on a mission She's got refugees from Russia, including an old friend who we didn't know was 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 working behind the scenes, Colossus, uh, Peter Rasputin. Now, we read the first issue of Marauders. They went to Russia. There was not even a brief mention of Colossus. So did this happen after that or in the meantime or in an unexplained adventure? Or is it just this was a plan and the storytelling people never quite connected the dots with each other? Frankly, that's my guess. Next, from the desk of Charles Xavier. And basically, this is laying out the new status quo for the world. That like, look, if you've got a treaty with us, um, then we're good. Um, but if you're uh, a non-treaty nation, right? All a bunch of nations are like, we're not going to recognize mutants. Russia and and um, Sokovia and, and, and a bunch of other countries, not a bunch, but several, just will not officially recognize Krakoa. So the official response from Charles Xavier is that, look, we're going to put political pressure on you and everything, punitive pressures will be indirect, if any, maybe sanctions and whatever. We're nonviolent. We're not about killing. Now, the unofficial response to non-treaty nations is this. Look, your nation... Uh, doesn't want to recognize us so we can't we're not going to give you our amazing mutant miracle drugs but if you still want that stuff well we got a guy you can talk to come talk to my man black tom cassidy and he should be able to make it happen right so uh meanwhile mutants will work as like sort of resistance cells in those countries behind the scenes to free their brethren to give them access to <coughs> to krakoa and ideally to, you know, make change and get them to recognize the mutants. Uh, next, we've got a sort of like, hmm, somebody's bored in an airline and seems rather suspicious. Okay. Setting us up for something. Um, so next we get uh, Xavier is going on uh, a diplomatic mission to Sokovia, who have uh, a, a, a country I looked up because I didn't really remember Sokovia from the comics and I looked it up and I guess maybe first appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and now has been brought into the Marvel Universe. I think it was in the recent Punisher books. Sokovia is essentially being run by Baron Strucker and Hydra. It's like a mobbed up country. So this is um, a little concerning and we'll see how this plays out soon. Um, so he's impressed and uh, you know they give him a big toast, a toast to a better world, a toast to Sokovia's friend and guardian, Charles Xavier. May he live forever. Foreshadowing? Ham-fisted ham foreshadowing? Maybe. Anyway, uh, back to uh, the healing gardens, appropriately, and our buddy the healer. So the healer is healing. He's using his healing powers because his name is Healer. Right? But, so, okay, everybody's hurt, and they're remembering these terrible things that happened in Russia, and they've got these memories, and they've, they're, in, they're in intense pain and everything else, and the healer, but... You know, we've got healing drugs and we've got healing mutants. They're, they're going to be okay, right? So it doesn't feel like that big of a deal. Next, uh, back to the airplane with our, uh, our passengers. And we can see things are going down. The plane is decompressing. One of them is in a pilot's outfit. They're changing out. All right, they're clearly, they're terrorists. They got weird strips of cloth or paint on them or something. Uh, you know, are they superhuman? Maybe mutants probably not maybe augment in some way we don't we don't really know they there's something about them that's kind of familiar if you got an idea who this might be why don't you put it in the comments down below anyway here they are skydiving hence our fun skydiving thumbnail image free fall and uh they as they enter the perimeter the sky lights up as we had talked about in the defense parameters and uh 
Black Tom's like, who's that? And Sage is like, oh, maybe it's Domino. She's back from her secret mission because they had lost contact with her. And Black Tom's like, I don't like it. Black Tom had had a conversation with Xavier. He's like, another thing, another thing I don't like is, you know, you're bringing every mutant in. Like, you, the, just because they're mutants, they're going to be copacetic with us and our plans. I don't know that that's true. This is, he's not the first person to raise this to Xavier or anything else. And Xavier is just like, look, they're mutants. You can trust them. Okay. Krakoa is not a prison, he says. Okay, whatever you want, Charlie. What it is, though, it seems like a shooting gallery because here come our our big baddies with the parachuters, and they got laser scopes, and they're blown away mutants. And, man, everybody's panicking and scared because these guys have guns because par- guys are parachuting with guns. We've got, like, omega-level mutants on this island, not to mention even the non-omega-level mutants a lot of them that guns are not going to hurt and a lot of them that can do a lot to protect themselves right so i don't quite see how five people parachuting in with guns is is a is going to be like a massacre but whatever xavier's like i can't sense them uh they got some kind of psychic block but i better get out of here because they're obviously after me and wolverine is panicking everyone's going crazy because what people are getting shot but who cares if you get shot because all mutants are immortal so the worst that happens if you, you lose maybe up to a week's worth of memories as they reboot you from your last backup. So who cares? Why are that? Why is it so intense? I, I don't know. To me, that's drain. That idea, as I've been saying in a lot of my reviews, drains a lot of drama, and I think it's got to go away sooner than later. Anyway, um, the group is fighting. We've got uh, healer healing, terrorist terrorizing. Shooting, they're shooting Black Tom, they're shooting everybody. Oh my gosh, what's going on? They got Xavier cornered and Kablamo. And Wolverine's going nuts and killing them all. And Beast, like, you can't kill them all. We got to f- keep one of them alive, find out what happened. Because what? What happened? What could make Wolverine go so crazy? Oh my goodness, Professor X was shot. Is he dead? Well, they we've got these mutant protocols, but he's. He's the guy who does all the backing up and the rebacking up, but they did explicitly state that without him, a trained telepath could do the same job. Have any been trained yet? Could Gene Gray not just like could they not clone Charlie and reboot him? So unless the answer is no, then there's no stakes to this and there's no drama whatsoever. So I'm hoping that this is the first in the unraveling of of this like invincibility of the mutants, because that's just not fun. Um. Okay, so where are we at? We're at X Force number one. We've already read X Men, Marauders, Excalibur, New Mutants. Coming next, Fallen Angels, and then back to X Men and repeat the cycle again. Will I read all the number twos of these guys? I probably will. What's happening? But I I'm not definitely signing up for all of them long term. Um. So, let's see what's coming next. Well, let me put on my Krakoan uh, translation goggles. And uh, this says, next, regicide. So the king is dead. Who's the king? Xavier? Someone else? Uh, Is this a red herring? Who knows? Uh, That's it for X-Force number one. You know, I enjoyed this book uh, to a certain degree, but I feel that there's some stuff missing here. Like, who is X-Force? What is X-Force? The word X-Force is never used. Uh, That's the name of this book. Who is the X-Force? What is their mission? What are their powers? How do they do this? Okay, maybe we're just getting thrown into the chaos from which the X-Force will emerge. But either way, we don't learn much about any of these characters. And that is becoming a big problem to me. Because one of the problems with X-Men continuity that led to the whole House of X, Powers of X reboot thing is the convoluted continuity and the hugeness of the X-Men universe, it's a little bit difficult and it's especially daunting for new readers. So with some of these text pieces, maybe it's time to do a little bit more when you when you list who the team is, maybe a little bit about their powers or general areas, some kind of clues and hints about what they can do because if it's not clear to me, and I've been reading comics for 35 something years plus, And read next man during a lot of that time. Granted, not all of that time. 
But if I can't make heads or tails out of it, then uh, Joe Punchclock uh, off the street is going to have a lot of trouble, you know. Um, and, and, and hey, speaking of people off the street, we're going to get a lot of new people subscribing to this channel, and it makes me incredibly happy. We're getting a lot of interest in uh, X-Men, House of X, Powers of X, all this X stuff but also in all the other cool content that uh, we've been uh, unleashing on you. Some of our longer form videos, uh, up to the week, up to the minute reviews, and we've even started some throwback flashback reviews, which I'm pretty excited about doing a lot more of, uh, either with back issues, which I'm starting to get way more into again, uh, or with uh, some of the facsimile and dollar reproductions that Marvel and DC are putting out. Let's go revisit the past and look at what made those great and how they can, you know, influence the comics of today. I think that sounds like fun. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the little like button down there. If you want to get more uh, videos like this, hit the little subscribe thing and maybe the bell that'll give you reminders when we drop new videos. Uh, oh, and don't forget to leave a comment down below because that's my favorite part of this whole YouTube and experience is interacting. Uh, with you, the viewers at home. So uh, let's get it, get in there, mix it up in the comments, and thanks for watching. See you next time.